Hey guys, happy Sunday. Happy Sunday guys and welcome to July 18th I believe. Mm -hmm. So today we've got just a short little video for you, one of our favorite days since it's taken almost two years to come fruition, but today it comes to fruition. So we're going to share that with you now and stick around to the end of the video because we're going to do a question and answer with you guys. Uh, we've picked out a few questions from the last video and actually I've got one I'm going to read to you first and that is Mr. Ivan Jones. El Capitan, I can only look at the fun you're having and wish I could be there. More and more each day now, it looks like we may be heading back to COVID protocols even here in Richmond, Virginia. Ooh, sorry. There's been an uptick in cases, so El Capitan, tomorrow when the sun rises, please hold up your mug with some Bailey's Irish cream and say this one's for you, Ivan, and I'm sure I'll feel a whoosh of salt air by my face until next one. God bless you and crew, and especially Maddie. Thank well, you. Ivan, this one's for you, mate. Salute. Thank you so much. It's a very great comment. Yes, thank you very much. And we got a bunch more questions and answers for you guys following the video. So stick around till then and we'll see you then. Cheers. <laughs> what an adventure. <laughs> well, as all good things must come to an end, I'm sure Mr. Rick Boyd would say this is not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> this poor man has endured more shit for the last six weeks than any human being should ever be expected to tolerate in their lives. <laughs> all I can say is welcome to the family. <laughs> You guys may not know what that means now, but you probably will in the near future. <laughs> but anyway, this man has come down so many times and helped out with so much stuff and always there, tools in hand, ready and willing and able, just whatever's needed, just let's do it. Yeah, you sure. know you've got an open door at our house anytime you want. Just the question is if you ever want to open it again. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. This situation's been a little bit more extreme than others, but hey. <laughs> Enough it's been said. an adventure. <laughs> it, it, it has been an adventure. But yeah, you'll be sure and have a safe trip home and you tell Lisa hi from all of us and thanks for allowing you to come down and oh man, six weeks. That's that's an adventure right there. <laughs> yeah, and I'm going home that's and study another six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, now he's going to France for the Camino. Yep. Holy crap. This man, you have no idea what this guy's capable of. He just had both knees replaced in like the last what, two years? Yeah. Both knees replaced, and now he's going to do the El Camino in Spain. Uh, Spain start, or start, starting in France and going Starts to in Spain. France and ends in Spain. That's unbelievable. That's like how many kilometers? Uh, it's 480 miles. 480 miles. miles. Those two miles are the yeah. last two miles are that's, short. <laughs> that's a workout. That's a serious commitment right there. Yeah. But he's already done it twice, but in his own backyard because, of course, lockdown started and he wasn't able to go do the Camino like he planned to last year. So. He just kept walking around his neighborhood like eight miles a day until he did the Camino twice. So that's pretty cool. And got you started walking too. And when you're in uh, San Andreas. Oh Andres. yeah, somebody had to help shave this shit off. <laughs> uh, it's, it's been an adventure, that's for sure. Well, again, we appreciate it. Thank you very much, Rick. Until we meet again. Until we meet again. I see you when I see you again. Sounds good. Yeah, oh, well, you guys are finished at the market? Yes, Ooh, that's pineapple. good stuff. We got some uh, chives for free. Whoa. <laughs> As a gift. As a Green gift onions. for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they got roots too. Maybe we can plant some. Yeah, maybe. They're we'll nice get, to grow we'll on the get boat past too. Agriculture. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a nice looking pineapple. Yeah, there. smell, smell it. Smell the butt. I said, smell pardon? <laughs> smell the butt. That's how you know if it's a good pineapple. <laughs> uh, somebody wiped it. I can smell it over here. <laughs> We actually have these growing in our yard no in way. Uh, Orlando. Yeah, a bunch of them. And uh, we actually brought them from uh, 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 Panama. <laughs> yeah. Wow. There goes everybody, Eddie. Hey, Eddie. Dobre Thanks, ultra. man. <laughs> the bandito. He's learning some Russian. He's on his way. Well, guys. Well, that's your ride. Oyster. Take care. We'll Keep see the uh, big okay. adventure going. We'll see you for sure. Yeah, hey, man, you know it.
thanks again for everything, eh? Absolutely. And be sure and tell Lisa hi. I sure will. Take care, guys. Ciao, man. That's the way go. And so ends the beginning of our next grand adventure. Because keep in mind, guys, this is 2021. This is the year of new beginnings. So keep that in mind, because this is just the start. Thanks again for coming along for the ride. Thank you, Mr. Boyd, coming for the ride. We appreciate it more than you know, and we look forward to seeing you and Lisa again. Until that day, hasta luego. Ciao. Absolutely fabulous news this morning, mi amigos. <laughs> As you know, we just got our high field dinghy and finally got it out of storage and assembled and blown up, but there was a box missing. And of course it was the most important part, which for us was gonna be the new console. That's where all the electronics are and everything. So the new dinghy is sitting there beside Sophisticated Lady now, but the box with the console was lost and it's been three days already. We pretty much assumed it was gone, but the guys just found it up in storage this morning, right there, and they just dropped it off. How cool is that? Because yeah, this is the main part of the dinghy for us, houses all the electronics and everything. So, it's all in storage in here. There's our wheel, center pod. So now, we just need to open it up and see what it looks like. Expecting that, were you? <laughs> yeah, she's all ready to go. And the best stuff is inside. Look at that. She's fully wired for all our new gadgets underwater LEDs, floor light illumination, bow light, navigation lights, everything. Automatic bilge pump. We are in business. Full switch control panel on the outside. Awesome. Can't thank you guys enough. Thank you very much to everybody at Highfield. Thanks to Marine Warehouse for delivering it. And thank you to Shelter Bay for storing it and finding it. <laughs> That's an important part, finding it. Yeah, they've had it in storage here, all of it, for over a year since lockdown started. So it's all just been patiently waiting for us, but here it is. Now we can build the new dinghy. SSL dinghy, here we come. Ooh, nice <laughs> is it comfy? Wow. <laughs> They found our missing box. <laughs> you are the crew of big boxes. I've just seen huge boxes here. <laughs>
Oh, Maddie. Poor Maddie. <laughs> Poor Vera Madalena. She's crying that she wants to see <laughs> the dinghy. Maddie's coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, Maddie. <laughs> hey. I'm curious. <laughs> So we just got to get the fuel tank in and then we can work on the console which should only take about an hour maximum. Fuel filter installed, fuel line installed, bilge pump put back in, and hose clamp. Fuel line installed to the fuel tank. Nice. I feel like a grown up again. <laughs> you don't need them. We're just going for a little short dinghy ride. It's okay. I have a scar to push my foot in. No, well, you shouldn't. Okay, hang on, I'm coming. like a bullet <laughs> goes plunging into the ocean Shipwrecks, wow. Very old. Yeah, nobody.
nobody coming back for those. <laughs> I can't believe. After a lot of time, really, I can't believe. It's something. I know, we've been designing this. It's been. started designing it two years ago. Can you imagine? We finally got it today. <laughs> Thank you again, I feel. Julia, love you, man. Appreciate it. And one hole, I shot the Bay Marina to have a care. Oh, yeah, everybody. Can't have a care. We finally got it all come together. Yeah, here we have a lead light for the night. There's the red lights on, the LEDs. We have them front and back, so the whole cockpit illuminates front and behind the, the center console. And there's underwater LEDs, we haven't seen those yet. And lights on the front. Yeah. So red and green lights on the bow, and then there's a socket for an anchor light back here, or a steaming light, so when we're under power, we run that. And it should be just long enough, it has a white light just over my head coordination with the two lights back there. So that'd be cool. We should be very easy to spot on the water at night. So no reason anybody should be running into us at night anymore. That was always a big concern and focus last year. Oh yeah. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed as we shared that special day for us with you. And now we'll get back to some questions. We've selected randomly basically a few questions from the last video. First one from Javier Betancourt. I think that's how you pronounce your name, Javier, but... Uh, Javier. Javier. But your question is, what about the motor? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. fair enough, yeah. The issue. <laughs> I know we didn't speak about that in the last video, but yeah. We are still going to be using the gasoline engine from the previous dinghy on the new dinghy as you saw in this video, in today's video. But we have been working with some new partnerships and one of them is e-propulsion. And we have designed a completely new electric propulsion system mm -hmm. for this new dinghy. And it's taken a little bit of a while to put this whole thing together but it is now coming to fruition and we should have the new engine in about five to six weeks time. It's being shipped as a whole package with the electric propulsion system, the digital control system, and the Battery. electric outboard motor. Isn't that what I said? No, you didn't speak about the battery. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> well, the package, yeah, the battery is the main thing, but it's coming with a 9 kilowatt lithium battery system, and a 6 kilowatt electric motor, and the digital control system. So it's all one package, and it's coming from e-propulsion, and we should have it here sometime in the next five to six weeks. Yeah. And then we start to modify the new dinghy. Right, so we have to modify the new dinghy yeah. because the nine battery. kilowatt battery system is fairly large. It's mm -hmm. about 20 by 22 inches by 10 and a half or 11 inches high. So we're thinking about a couple of different options for mounting it, but some modification is going to be required for sure. The 6 kilowatt motor should be bolt on right on the back, no problem. The digital control system will be easy to mount, I don't see any problems with that. But it's mainly just the battery system. But look for more information on that soon, we'll have uh, more updates on that as we get closer to the delivery date. For now we're just going to continue using the Yamaha 25 horsepower as we have been. Okay, next question is from Mark Berry. Rick, did you know the folks from Distant Shores? Paul and Cheryl were in Panama. Great to see them in your video. Well, yes, actually, Mark, I do know Paul and Cheryl for a long time now. They're actually from very close to my hometown in Canada. I lived in Barrie, Ontario, in Kempenfelt Bay on the side of Lake Simcoe. They live just across Lake Simcoe. So while I didn't know them personally back then, I did know them because when I was living in Barrie, I was still studying sailing, just like you guys, most of you guys are now and I was watching all of their videos on VHS tapes way back like over 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> so I remember the VHS. I was very familiar with Paul and Cheryl way back when they were still building two-step. That was they built a 36 footer I think it was from scratch and sailed that all over the place for several years making videos and uh, I used to be one of those guys renting those videos every weekend religiously. So yeah I do know them well and Paul and Cheryl if you guys are watching it was great to see you so thanks again for your help with everything. Yeah, thank you so much. And I'm sure we're going to see you guys again soon. And yes, they did tell us they were in Panama. They were actually at Shelter Bay Marina waiting to deliver Distant Shores mm -hmm. 3 as we sailed in from San Andres. But yeah, they finally delivered Distant Shores 3 and now I believe they're over in 
Netherlands? Yeah, Holland, Netherlands. I think. Yeah. So they're over test sailing some new boats of aluminum design. I think that's what they're thinking their next boat is going to be. So we wish them all the best of that and we hope to see them again in the near future also. So good luck, Paul and Cheryl. Good luck, yeah. Next question from Tom Williams. Good find on the antenna connector. Do you have a SWR meter you could check the antenna with? No, unfortunately I do not. Too bad you didn't have the room to keep the heavier coax the entire run. Uh, yeah, I think that would probably be an improvement in the system overall. It's a short run of maybe 10 feet, but yeah, you can clearly see there's a diameter distance in the cable that goes up the mast to the one that comes down to the nav station. I've been thinking about eliminating that connector entirely and just dropping the heavy cable right through the deck where the mast is and bringing it inside the boat and solder it directly to another cable of the same size all the way over to the nav station. Thinking that might gain us, you know, a little bit less resistance in the line and less signal loss, obviously. So you guys can let me know if that's a good option or if you think we should do something else. But obviously, yes, I do want to keep our resistance to a minimum so that our signal and range is as best as it possibly can be. Tom also asked what happened to the kids. They had other plans from Panama, so as did Rick Boyd. He was just here for the trip down to Panama as well, as you saw today when he left. So today is probably the last episode you're going to see the kids in, and they will be carrying on with their journey. Next question from Al W. Rick, you managed to find a more modern version of the sedan chair for Maddie. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, this is sure. It was pretty cute, but I have to admit, when Maddie couldn't get around, and I just saw all those those buckets sitting there, and I thought yeah. that'd be a great thing to just you know, I set up some pillows in it, made like a chair for her, and. We just started to wheel her around and it helped, at least she could be mobile because... Uh, really, the Shelter Bay have uh, give us uh, the, the crutches. The yeah, the crutches. The crutches, uh, the high bag because our was broken. That was one of the... Yeah, Th thank you so much for your support. Uh, in the future they have uh, a wheelchair too, but for the moment, uh, if you I, I won't move it in this day, really uh, this is the best solution then very fast somebody like my husband final is uh, i'm mm -hmm. uh, i was so happy when he came but that was Juan Ho that gave us the crutches, so thank you very much, Juan Ho. And yeah. the ice bag, he had all these extra things that he brought over immediately as soon as Madalena got hurt. So thank you very much, Juan Ho. We can't tell you how much we yeah. appreciate your help and support in that time. Yeah, and I take advantage to this time, sure. Thank you so much for your, uh, I don't know the name in English, for your, it's oh, not they, bandage, the rigid. Uh, yeah, Cheryl brought us not one of the tensor bandage, but an actual brace, like an yeah, ankle brace. Great. Thank you so much. Because, so that helped a lot also yeah. when Madalena started becoming a little bit more mobile, but needed to stabilize her ankle. Mm -hmm. So thank you again to Cheryl. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. You are so kind. Oh, Al W continues on to say, I guess you know that Barry got hit with another tornado. Al, yes, I did hear all about it, and thank you to all of you that did send messages concerned knowing that I'm from Barrie and that's where my family is from, but I will let you know that my family, everybody is okay. They did have the tornadoes touch down. There was a lot of damage within about a mile of my parents' house, but uh, everybody came through okay and unscathed. There was some injuries, so it was, you know, it's a precarious situation. I think it was an F2 that touched down, so not huge, but enough that it definitely leveled a couple of houses, flipped a couple cars and hurt some people so our thoughts and wishes go out to the people in Barrie and I hope everybody's yeah. okay. The world in this time is um, start to become crazy. Yeah. yeah. Our weather's changing. Yeah, it's been a long time since Barrie got hit by a tornado. The last big tornado touchdown was back in the 80s, about five years before my family moved there. and It yeah. leveled a so big part ago. of the town so they can do damage. Mm -hmm. So anyway again best wishes to everybody and hope you made it through okay. Next question, let's see. Okay, G Bean. Oh, this is another one about the 259 connectors. Let's see. Ah, the ubiquitous PL259 connector, among the worst connectors ever created by man. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> it was developed in the 1930s as a power connector, and prior to any real understanding of radio frequency connector design, some doofus selected as an antenna connector during World War II. The foolishness has been perpetrated. Oops. <laughs> Sorry, the foolishness has been perpetuated for 80 years mainly because they are cheap to fabricate, even though the geometry of the connector is anything but radio frequency friendly. There are newer versions of the PL259 with, a se with separate crimp or solder center contact and compression shield connection. 
They are engineered to be RF friendly and overcome problems of overheating during soldering, distorting the insulation, making them even less RF friendly and often leading to shorted connectors. Well, thank you very much for the tip, mm -hmm. Mr. Bean. It's interesting. Mr. Bean. <laughs> Sorry, I just realized that when I said it. G Bean, so yes, Mr. Bean. Thank you very much for the tips. We will have a look at that. And I'm still looking at maybe just soldering the connection to, to, together permanently because it's not something that typically has to come apart. But maybe that's a good option, maybe it's not a good option. I don't know. I'll let you guys answer that in the questions, the comments down below, and uh, we'll go from there. But thank you very much for the informative question. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. Always like to hear some new tips and learn something new. Okay, next question from Tanya Fazio. Hi Rick, my husband and I have been watching your videos for years. The information you provide has been incredibly useful both from a travel standpoint and boat maintenance. Boat maintenance is perspective. Yes, and boat maintenance and perspective. Thank you. We are in process of adding additional solar panels to our Beneteau 34 and we're planning to mount them as you did on the Bimini. But so far we can't figure out how best to do it. Can I ask what did you do to mount yours? Did you use any special hardware? Any advice would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Now, this is something I should probably make a video because I did film it when we built the whole system back like four or five years ago, but I never actually did include that footage in a video. Um, mine's all custom mounts and braces. We built it one piece at a time, and that was back when Nate Porter was on board, if you remember Nate from Drenched, Expedition Drenched now. But we built the system one piece at a time and hard bolted the solar panels to the roof of the Bimini. So basically we used the existing stainless rails, which were good one inch solid rails, but we added several reinforcements underneath the rails to brace them, including into the existing radar arch and down to the uh, tow rail. It's a very strong structure and has held up very well. And as you know, we've survived a couple of, well, hurricanes, yeah. big yeah. storms. So. The wind resistance has been not a problem, cooling has not been a problem, and yeah, maybe we can do a little bit of a review on that someday in another video. The other panels that we did mount were on the rails, and the rail mounts, I actually used the Mantis rail mounts, which are a one inch clamp mount that clamps onto any stainless rail, and gives you a very, very well supported pivot. So those ones I can actually pivot down or up as well. So if we're going through a narrow area, we're coming into a dock, I always turn them down to get them out of the way. And we can turn them this way or that way to match the sun angle mm -hmm. whenever we want as well. So those are very handy. If you haven't checked out Mantis website, they've got a lot of really great accessories for cruising. And that would be just one of them. So have a look at mantismarine.com and you'll find those as well. Next question was more of a conversation that was on one of our comments. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure who it started with, but it was Rick One and Jacob Lapointe. And somebody said that I know it must be a lot easier to find footage on shore than to actually go sailing. <laughs> and Jacob replied, said, they're still trying to get the boat ready for across the Pacific. The engine was about shot, rudder nearly broken off, amongst yeah. other things. Well, kind of, yes. But then Rick One had replied, well, I see another motorcycle. I said to myself, here we go again, another Rick does the town. Please <laughs> comment. <laughs> well, Rick... All I can tell you is that this is a sailing lifestyle channel and by lifestyle means that we encompass everything that it takes to actually accomplish living on a sailboat, mm -hmm. which doesn't mean sailing every day. I mean, there's a thousand sailing channels out there now. If all you want to see is some sailing through the water, you can find that anywhere. I've done all that. I've been around for a long time, Rick, and I can tell you that before YouTube even existed, I had 50,000 miles on this boat alone under my name as captain, okay? So I don't feel I have anything to prove to anybody. If I want to take some time and spend it in an area and actually meet the people, to me, that's what the sailing lifestyle is more about. It's not about just the trip there. It's about enjoying the sailing, of course, and I do. You'll find I'm at ease the most when I'm at sea, but when I'm on shore, we are there to explore different cultures, meet different parts of the world, Exploring meet different people. a new land, a new country. This is what it's about. That's what the sailing lifestyle is supposed to encompass, and that's what we have learned to encompass. Now, yes, the last year, we have been physically tied to one location for different reasons. You know, yeah, some speculate. Down. Some speculate, oh, we're just scared, didn't want to move, not, you know. But no, it's just that we were waiting to move in the direction we want to move. Sure, I could have went back to the East Caribbean. Almost one year, I followed, followed down. All the I, have, was... I have 15 years in the East Caribbean, buddy. 
I've seen it, I've done it, I don't need to go back. So for me to say, well, yeah, it's open, I could go to Curacao or Aruba or some other, I don't want to go there. Been there, done that. Our exercise is to get through the Panama Canal and get into Pacific and do some more exploring on a yeah, different area. New, new, new country, new place, new everything. So for us, that was worth waiting for the time to be right in order to leave San Andres, come to Panama, and get the work done that we need to do. Because we still have a ton of work to get this boat ready before I feel that she's yeah. actually ready to take on any new adventures in more remote locations. The Pachivi is no, is no a joke. No, it's not a joke. Pachivi not a joke and everything is hugely more expensive to fix or repair in the Pacific because it's much harder to gain access so right now we're taking advantage of our location and getting things done while we have opportunity and then we move on so when we are ready trust me Rick we yeah. will move on and believe thank you for your we comment. won't make already soon we want our already soon okay. believe us our last question comes from I believe it's now correct me if I'm wrong but hopefully it's Ireland Wilson Ireland Salty One Bird is her profile name on Instagram. But she says, Hi, I've been watching your videos for a while now and love them. I have a golfing cockatoo and we're planning on leaving San Diego and trying to do Panama and the Caribbean. Do you have any tips on customs and the process of bringing the bird into international waters? Thank you so much. Oh, that's amazing. I had a golfing cockatoo a long time ago. It wasn't the friendliest bird, but it was a cool bird. <laughs> but I've had quite a different collection of... Uh, parrots and different birds through have a lot of energy no the cockatoo most of my uh, most of my adult life yes golf and cockatoo nice bird as far as traveling internationally with it i'm not sure if the golf and cockatoo is on the endangered species list or not i mean tiki is an african gray parrot so they need a sighting certificate mm. so she has her sighting certificate she also needs to be identifiable so she has a wristband and also a microchip embedded in her chest yeah. those are requirements for travel she has a pet passport that indicates all of her shots, status, everything like that, where she's located, where she was born, and she's from Canada. So that's all in her passport and her paperwork. You'll probably have to do similar things, but again, it's going to depend on the breed of the parrot if you need CITES certification or anything like that. So and you have the to country do little... that you want to visit too. Yeah, and it's going to have a lot to do with the countries. Bearing in mind that certain countries, Australia, New Zealand, I don't think they're going to even let us in with Tiki, so we have to either cross them off our list or lose tiki which is less you know which is worse i don't know so those are things decisions that we're gonna have to make in the future also so you're gonna have to make the same decisions but do your research and you should be fine just get the paperwork started well in advance give yourself a few months and you'll be good to go aside from that guys i think we're gonna get back to our sunday so yeah. i want to say thanks again for watching we really appreciate you tuning in to today's video we'll have some more updates coming up soon and thank you guys for all the, the beautiful wishes that uh, I receive for you. Thank you for all the all your word for best and fast recovery. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for all your attention. And, and yes, you'll be happy to know Maddie is walking better. She's still yeah, using day crutches, day. but I, becoming more and more mobile. So yeah. hopefully there's a light at the end of the tunnel. But thanks again to Martin, Dr. Martin, that yeah, was helping thanks. us at Shelter Bay thanks Marina. So we very much appreciate your help. Oh, so, I need to buy your shoes, eh? Need to buy the wooden shoes. Yeah. yeah. They will help. Yeah. All right, guys. Have a great day. Enjoy your Sunday. And we'll see you next time. Hey guys, and happy Sunday, and happy. welcome aboard. Sorry. Hey guys, and happy Sunday. Well, I stopped and did it again so you could do it that time. Because <laughs> I cut you off the first time. Hey, you didn't tell me. Okay, together? Yeah, it's okay. fine. Hey guys, hey guys. and happy, happy Sunday. Sunday. Oh no, you... Like you did the first time, but I interrupted you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey guys, and happy Sunday. Happy to you guys. And welcome to Sunday, July 18th, I believe. So today. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat>
Hey guys, happy Sunday. <laughs> It's amazing how you can get messed up on the first <laughs> little tiny piece of making a video. All the way. <laughs> it's not so sad for some time. It feels kind of important, you know. You got to start the good or the good flow and the start yeah, of the video. Shine. <laughs> Otherwise, it just goes downhill from there. So, anyway, let's try this again. Hey guys, <laughs> no, we got to start. Never mind. Hey guys, happy Sunday. Happy Sunday, guys.